see the judge. I don't really know. They got me set at a five thousand dollar bond. I'm I'm still just at a loss for work. That you will see this struggle. For the struggle continues. Yes. Unless and until we unite. Yes. Together. Yes. Move the conversation from one where it's an endless feed, feedback loop that's pretty negative about what's been happening um, in this country, um, all the different cases. Some people might see me and think, oh, well, why is this guy here talking about Japanese American Citizens League? Uh, I'm a fourth generation biracial Japanese American and uh, for the history of my family's uh, immigration to this United States starting almost a hundred years ago, we have been uh, discriminated against in one form or another with each passing generation. From my great grandparents who immigrated to California and weren't allowed to purchase land because of the alien land law, to my grandmother who was forcibly evicted from her home uh, and sent to Utah during World War II for the crime of looking like the Japanese enemy. Uh, to my mother and her siblings who did not learn the language of their ancestors because it was still stigmatized. Uh, to myself who grew up in the 1980s and 90s thinking it was still a bad thing to be Japanese. Hmm. So is there a moment in your life where racism really affected you besides all everything that we're seeing every day but on a personal level? Sure, sure. Um, one of the questions that I ask my subjects, and I think I should turn the mirror on myself, is what was your earliest recollection of race? Um, and, you know, I like to tell people that my earliest recollection happened when I was in first grade. And I, I'm originally from Chicago, so I was in um, a predominantly mixed neighborhood, mostly, you know, African American, Latino. Um, some white folks was, that the neighborhood I lived in was still transitioning um, and so I was in class and the boy next to me who happened to be Puerto Rican called me the n-word the one percent want us to fight each other instead of those really responsible for poverty and wars yeah. Yeah. both of these decisions were based on the misguided idea that discrimination is a thing of the past in the real world, we know racism is a hurdle people of color are forced to overcome on a daily basis. Take the construction industry, for example. If you look at any large construction site in Philadelphia, odds are the high-paid jobs are done by white workers. That's why the Fair Hiring Coalition came together in 2011. Took me by surprise because I had been told that the N word was used only by white people. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this boy spoke Spanish and I knew he didn't look like a typical white boy, so why was he calling me the N word? So I went home and, you know, tried to get some answers from my parents and it really wasn't helping. <laughs> but that, that incident sticks with me because. Um, It made me realize that privilege in this country is like a it's like a game. It's like everybody's jockeying for position to be accepted. Everybody's jockeying for a position to be above someone else. And so his act, and he, you know, he was my, he was five years old or six years old like me. He probably was hearing this at home. Mm -hmm. um, it was a way for him to put himself above me and. You know, now I understand why people of color, you know, do the things that we do. We're influenced by the system. So that's why I say that racism is a, is a sickness. It's infected all of us. It's not just the crazy white people wearing hoods. It's not the crazy white people who shoot up churches. All of us are infected in some kind of way, shape, or form by racism. Mm -hmm. And that incident kind of put that into early perspective for me. We're very happy to be able to have this event on campus tonight as part of the Philly Black Lives Matter week. Um, this year we have um, connections across the nation 
at, um, what do we have, Seattle, um, D.C., New York, Chicago, Baltimore, there are other cities who are participating, um, Newark, right, other cities, Omaha, I think, is trying to get on board, you know, so we have a lot of, of um, cities participating in, in, in the movement. Um, tonight, we're going to kick off our event with the film screening of Precious Knowledge, which addresses the issue of um, uh, ethnic studies um, as, as the bigger issues and what happened in Arizona, but then also um, across the U.S., kind of the broader conversation about what it means to, to teach um, histories, right, instead of the single story of history, single story of experience um, in schools. Reaching impact that people understand or even acknowledge at this time. Uh, imagine the impact on your children and your grandchildren if these kinds of discriminatory practices continue on the businesses of the immigrant generation. Don't our communities deserve a fair shot? Yes! Yes! Don't we have the same right to freedom and liberty that all other Americans do? Yes! So if you believe... Justice Tashima said, or the Ninth Circuit judge wrote that the conservative lawmakers pass the ethnic studies restriction, quote, not for a legitimate educational purpose, but for an invidious, discriminatory racial purpose and a politically partisan purpose. Um, the decision was then, based on, on his statements, was that uh, what the state of Arizona had done was racist and discriminatory. Um, and so they were no longer allowed to ban um, a program like the Mexican American Studies program. Um, it's been almost, yeah, yeah. It was a huge, huge, huge win. Um, the struggle now is what do we do? Um, and, um, you know, we're looking at a decade's worth of trauma, um, of racial state violence. Um, and how do we um, create a uh, actions or continue to engage in actions of what uh, Native scholar Gerald Visenor talks about as notions of survivance, practices of survivance. So I'm finding I'm so, finding many, so many, many different mentalities different mentality today. It seems, it seems hard. hard. It seems, it challenging. seems challenging. I don't say hard, hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else is a else challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, 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 I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge, and I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think we, that all we all have a purpose in life, in life. and mine's going to take on a task that most that most of back away back from, away from. That, impossible, that impossible, so people say it's impossible, I see possibilities. I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality, mentality, there are there are different mentalities, but just like just like there's different ways to teach people how to read, there's different ways to communicate people. It's different ways.